launch conductor in um, mission control. We, we pause at this moment in our countdown to remember and honor the lives of each of the participants on the Celestis Memorial space flight. Their presence on this flight signifies a commitment to the opening of the space frontier shared by all of us. We wish the friends and families present today and all those who are with us in spirit all over the world, Godspeed, good luck, and our thanks for allowing us to share this very personal time with you today. LCL. Five vehicles armed, three, two, one, fire. Good evening. My name is Mark and I'm the Celestis Ambassador and welcome to another one of our mission or pre-launch mission briefings. We have a lot of information that we need to relate to you for tonight's briefing. For those of us that are joining us for the very first time, uh, we do have a comment section during this broadcast where you can ask any question that could possibly come to your head. Um, between ourselves and our team at Celestis, we'll make sure that we answer every question that you have asked. Once again, welcome. This is for the Horizon Flight. And without any further ado, I'd like to bring up our CEO and prime guru here, Charles Schaefer. Good evening, Charles. How are you? I'm well. Your um, audio was weird at the beginning, but it seems seems well now. How is Did mine? Did it work itself out? Yeah. Okay, seems yours is perfect right now. So, yeah. So once again, if my audio is breaking up, this is our pre-launch mission briefing with Celestis for our Horizon flight, our upcoming Horizon flight. Uh, Charles Chafer, our guru here, has a lot of information to share uh, with all of us. So let's uh, go on with Charles. Charles, what do you have for us today? What are we looking forward to? Well, um, lots of stuff. Wanted to say hello to everyone who's joined us. And uh, just before we get into the subjects, for tonight, I want to remind everybody that we have missions coming up, sort of our 17th mission is the Horizon Flight, and that's mostly what we'll focus on tonight. If there are other questions about other missions, happy to take them. Then our 18th mission, Aurora, will fly COVID permitting. Uh, out of New Mexico in the spring. That's our Earthrise service. We're scheduled to go to the moon on our 19th mission, which right now is scheduled for the fourth quarter of this year, uh, launching from Cape Canaveral. And uh, then 20 is most likely going to be our Excelsior orbital flight. 21 will probably be our Enterprise Voyager flight. So we've got a, um, a full manifest of missions on tap, and uh, we're taking reservations on all of those, except, of course, the Horizon flight, which has been integrated, uh, transferred from Houston to Seattle uh, to our satellite provider, Spaceflight Inc. Um, they have built the Sherpa FX-1 payload vehicle, which is flying as part of the SpaceX Transporter 1 mission. And we call our mission Horizon. And uh, we name every mission. Horizon got its name because we'll be flying to a sun synchronous polar orbit uh, and therefore and with on board a uh, launch that has 20 satellites on board. So there'll be satellites coming over the horizon routinely, uh, including ours. Um, so I think, Mark, uh, let me just talk first of all about uh, the event of this week, 
which is our Horizon Flight Memorial Service, scheduled for Thursday, January 14, live on the air at 5 p.m. Central Time in the U.S. Now, I did something that I've never done before, which is I made a commitment to a date for that memorial service other than the day before the launch. And our plan on that is that, first of all, um, because this is a completely remote mission on our part, we aren't tied to having any services uh, there in Florida on the day of the launch. And we thought we'd try a little bit larger experience with the memorial service. For all of our missions, it breaks down to where approximately 30% of the participants on board have family or friends there at the launch, which means about 70% don't. And so for them, a memorial service, which is even webcast from the launch site, doesn't completely involve them. So what we came up with, with this time, and it is our first attempt, so we'll expect um, that there may be a couple of hiccups along the way, but I've got to tell you, we've got a hardworking team. And even today, we did our technology run through and practice, and it looks good. But this memorial service is different in that we invited everyone to send us a two to three minute video, uh, which is basically your testimonial for the memorial service. And I wasn't sure what kind of a response we would get. We got an enormous response. Uh, not everyone chose to participate, and we certainly understand that. But there will be, um, I believe we're currently at seven 20 minute, um, segments um, during the memorial service of video tributes that you made to your loved one. And they're really compelling. So the first thing that we'll do that we haven't done before is that we're including a lot more people in giving them the opportunity to tell a brief story about their loved one, why they're on board. Um, and that is something that I think will work out so well that it, most of our future missions will go uh, with that option for folks who, who can't come to the launch. We also have some really uh, pretty amazing set of speakers at the memorial service, and they include um, Frank White. For many of you who follow space, you'll know Frank as the originator of the term overview effect, which was a insight Frank got many years ago. He wrote the book called The Overview Effect about the impact of viewing the earth from space, what that impact on astronauts is and how it's life changing for them. And a few years ago, or a couple of years ago, Frank and I were talking and he suddenly realized that our Celestis families, when they're watching the launch, experience their own sort of reverse version of the overview effect when they're saying goodbye to a loved one as they travel onto space. So Frank will be with us uh, for the memorial service. We also have <clears throat> Christina Rasmussen, who is the director and founder of the Life Reentry Institute. And Christina has devoted her career to helping families understand grief, evolve through grief, and indeed re-enter life after grief. She is a, a, a space nut like many of us are and has interviewed uh, uh, on her podcasts a number of astronauts and space thinkers. And she's coming on board to try to give some words of counsel. The final guest 
that we have for the memorial service is a, another friend of many years, astronaut Nicole Stott. Nicole um, traveled to the space station as a NASA astronaut on two occasions, uh, both on the space shuttle. And I was privileged to be able to be there one time when she took off. And she has since retired from NASA and has started the Space and Art Foundation and has some very interesting insights about not only what it's like to travel in space and so what your loved ones will be sort of symbolically um, uh, going through, but also broader the effect of space and art on humanity. So we'll intersperse those folks among the videos, have some music, and plan on it being about a two and a half an hour service, which seems like a long time, but uh, it's about half the time of our most recent service. Um, and I think that's due to the discipline of asking people to do a two to three minute um, video. But they're very interesting. You'll see everybody from Tom Hanks and Ron Howard talking about their friend who's on board to people from Japan talking about their loved ones on board. We'll do it alphabetically by participant. So if you only want to watch part of the memorial service, you figure out where your loved one is in the alphabet and take a shot at joining us then. Um, as I say, I'm very excited about it. It uh, will be, as always, I believe, uniquely compelling and a great way many people are planning on it to be the, the send-off, if you will, for their loved ones. So that's this Thursday, 5 p.m. Central Time, U.S. And we're going to do something else that we've never done before, which is we'll, we'll record it. We've always recorded it, but we will keep it on our YouTube channel and on our Facebook channel so that you can, if you didn't see it or if a friend couldn't make it, you can watch it at any point after the event. And we'll probably leave it up there for quite some time so that you can access the service uh, on demand, if you will. And uh, we'll also run it one more time in its entirety before the launch. So uh, again, this week, how do you log on to it? Well, you have three options. The first is to go to our website, www.celestis.com, and we've rejiggered the homepage to where right up front is the Horizon Flight. And if you click on the event page, you'll see event page. You can go there and it will have links directly to the memorial service. That'll be the same thing on launch day as well. But the event page is up now. Uh, you'll see some images of our transfer. You'll see images of the Sherpa FX carrier with uh, artist renditions of how the capsules look on the spacecraft, as well as bios on the speakers and the agenda and what have you. So go to the website, click on the event page, and you can uh, attend the memorial service. Uh, the other two ways are simply to go to our Facebook page uh, at the time of the launch or of the memorial service, and it will be, uh, you'll see it there. You can also go to our YouTube channel at the same time. Uh, if you want to click on that link. So there's really three ways to get to the memorial service. I encourage you to let, and there's also on the, uh, on the event page, there's a way that you can share the information about the memorial service with anyone that you'd like to, who you think would like to see it. And in these, again, COVID times, uh, the, the best way to view it is in the comfort of your and safety of your own home or, or wherever. And uh, so I think I'll stop at that point uh, with the memorial service. And Mark, do you have any questions or comments or anything uh, that you want to add? Well, uh, once again, thank you, Charles, for this very, very important and urgent information. 
Uh, there have been a lot of questions. If, if you guys are not involved in our comments section, our chat section on both YouTube channel and Facebook, uh, you may want to get involved if you have questions, anything that's been asked. Uh, our Celestis team online has been answering all of your questions as they come in. Um, some of them is, is worth repeating. Others, well, not so much because it's been answered by our team. Always remember, if you have questions, please don't wait until the very, very last minute. Uh, we still have some more inf important information for you to hear during this broadcast. Um, understand that uh, things happen. Things are fluid. Uh, but as for the memorial service that is coming up this Thursday, um, it, it's going to be an incredible event. It's uh, the first time we had to go uh, virtual on this due to, you know, very obvious circumstances. Um, so it's going to be a new kind of thing for all of us. But from the previews that we've already seen ourselves as Celestis, I don't think we're going to disappoint at all in this, Charlie. What, what, what do you think? How do you feel about that? Um, I'm very impressed with the team. We brought in a, a team called Cosmic Perspective, which are a couple of millennials. I don't think they'll mind if I call them millennials and travel around the country. <laughs> if you watch their coverage of the SpaceX uh, uh, Starship launch um, from Boca Chica, a couple of weeks ago, you were amazed. But if you go to CosmicPerspective.com, <coughs> you'll see those are the folks that are doing the um, webcasts for both uh, memorial service, which is the 14th, and the launch. So a little bit more uh, people, on, we have been trying to communicate with everybody about that change from the 13th to the 14th. Right. That, uh, that was a tough call. And, um, you know, I might not, uh, might not make it the next time, but we really, we had a lot of people that wanted to get their videos in. And uh, so we, and what a surprise, not everybody lived by the deadline that we established. So we, we moved the deadline and still not everybody got them there. And we got a lot of, uh, oh, I'll get it to you tomorrow. Just please let me have it. And I folded. I will. I said, okay, oh, we'll move because at that point, most people Charles. were expecting the launch to be on the 14th. We got to have rules, Charles. Yeah. Charles, we I have think I've learned my lesson. Rules. I think <laughs> I've learned my lesson. Um, but it's hard to say no when someone so eloquently requests that oh. the opportunity to celebrate their loved but one. They were told, Charles. Yeah. They oh, were they were given deadline dates, Charles. Yeah. They. We, we, we gave them enough time to know when to get it in, but your soft heart, as it is, gave in. All yeah, right. well, yeah, and as I said, I might not do it again next time because- <laughs> Yeah, you will. Yeah, you will. It has hiccups for people, and yeah. we, heard, we hear you. The reason that I thought it would be okay not to dwell on it too much is that people were already expecting they were going to have to watch the launch on the 14th. So I figured we'd buy a day, we'd get more videos in, which we did, what a shock, and um, away we'll go. Uh, the good news, though, is that if somehow the 14th just doesn't work for you, it doesn't matter. This whole thing will be available to you on demand and we'll run it once again before the launch. But uh, I, I... Again, I'd flip a coin whether I'd do that <laughs> again. But I do know we got more videos in from people, and um, we're excited about being able to uh, have them. And everybody else, let's 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 join on the 13th and enjoy the memorial service. Right. Uh, speaking of communications, if you have not set your spam filter to where you're not rejecting emails from launch team at celestis.com, do it. <laughs> because now we, in for those of you who've known us for multiple flights, you know we go out of our way to let people know. In fact, one of our staff members, Richard, today started calling everybody that we can tell hasn't opened their email. And uh, if you haven't gotten that call yet, you'll get it. Or if it's on your message machine, you should listen to it. But part of the responsibility for this is y'all 
making sure that you can receive our emails. Nothing, again, no communication path is perfect, but we've sent out, I believe now, seven emails since November 20th to people. And we do Facebook Live events and we call you, but um, you all have to help us out because this is an important event and we know you want to be um, uh, part of it. I see a question here about once in orbit, are you able to track it? The answer on that is yes. Right. Cool thing about this mission is because we're in a polar orbit, it's going to come over your house. Uh, every few, you know, every, you know, a repeat cycle, not to get too technical on you, but for Landsat, which is a earth imagery satellite that's in a polar orbit. It covers the entire surface of the earth every third and fourth day. And so unlike say the heritage flight, which was our last orbital mission, uh, it's, it never gets much above Texas and Florida because of the equatorial orbit that it's in. So you are, you can track it, but you can't kind of know that it's going over at any time. Sure. And a polar Rising. orbit, yeah. polar is this way, right, Charles? Yeah, and polar the Earth is, is turning way. while the orbit is, is so you've got your, your left fist is rotating and right. your right fist is, is coming around the bend. And so it eventually will see you. And so for that reason, the tracking component of our website is really cool because you can kind of figure out when mom's going over. And uh, some people even go out at night and you can't, I'm not, you, you'll be able to sense it. You won't be able to see it. It's not a big enough spacecraft to see it, but you will, the, the short answer to that question is the payload is trackable and, um, uh, on, and it will be a polar orbit, uh, sun synchronous it's called, which means that gets to the equator at noon um, and that's that's a shadows deal. There are a lot of Earth imagery satellites, and they like to take a direct overhead look with no shadows to interfere. So um, the uh, bottom line on that is will be the evening of Thursday. And uh, if you didn't get your video in by now, I believe I gave one person special dispensation to today, but it doesn't matter because we have a, a an actor friend of Mark's who has one of the most amazing voices on the planet. Yeah. We'll be reading uh, a uh, paragraph from the um, biography section that that you've sent us. If you if you've sent us that. So uh, we're, we're trying to make sure that certainly everyone's name and flight capsule message will be mentioned at the memorial service. Those of you who have sent in videos, you will see your video. And those of you that have sent in uh, biographies will speak some of the biographies at the memorial service. And again, I think it's great. Um, so now everybody's going, when, when is the launch? Right. And everybody's going, you know, tell me exactly when it is because I have to make plans. <laughs> and I always smile about that and try to say, now, now, <laughs> we're a secondary payload. We constitute about 0. 0.000, maybe 4% of the capacity on a launcher. And uh, as we say in the contract, as we say when we're talking to you about the service, we don't call the launch date. So for those of you who aren't intimate with space or anything like that, it's really hard to get stuff into orbit. In fact, it's so hard. I said earlier to someone today that over the years since we've been around and the 17 missions that we've done beginning in 1990, in the mid 1990s, I believe there have been six other companies that have, come on board and said, we're going to do this. We're going to offer this service. And of those six other companies, one company did one flight, and that was years ago. And that's an indication that this is really hard. And I'm not saying that 
for any reason other than to give you context of getting small payloads into orbit is um, a challenge. And one of the challenges that we don't control is when the launch occurs. We, sh we provide our capsules to our provider, they do the integration, and we're obligated under our contract to do that transfer within two years of uh, receiving um, your uh, loved one's remains. But at that point, it goes through a cycle of attachment, balancing, measurement, all of these things. Shipment to the launch site, integration to the launch vehicle. So that's where we are right now. We've done been shipped to the launch site. The integration for our uh, Sherpa spacecraft, which is one of, I believe, 20 spacecraft on this launch, uh, started out last Monday. And uh, many of you have read that there was, and there's a nice picture of Sherpa, and you can actually see where we sit, where Celesta sits on that spacecraft. If you look at the littlest box of all, uh, which is at about the, what is that? Is that that the, would be the- Three uh, o'clock? Uh, no, no, it's nine o'clock. Nine o'clock, yeah. yeah. About the nine o'clock location there, that's where we sit on Sherpa. And you can see the other satellites, the other attached payloads, et cetera, flying. So that integration started uh, Monday. And lo and behold, they had a slight hiccup, also known as an accident, in the payload processing. Uh, didn't damage our spacecraft, but it did damage uh, two DARPA spacecraft that actually now have been pulled off and will not fly on this mission. And as they were doing what's called the ring stack, which is stacking all of the satellites for encapsulation on the tip of the rocket for them flight. So that brings a complete grinding halt to everything as it should. And um, starts out a failure analysis uh, which is undergoing now, and that's basically what happened. And it's not a huge deal for us. Uh, imagine DARPA's would have preferred not to have to pull their satellites, but they were experimental satellites. But the bottom line is, is that we were told by our provider, Spaceflight, yesterday, uh, and therefore we mailed out today what we know, we were told by our provider that they received a communication from SpaceX, which is the launch provider, that the flight would now be no earlier than January 21st. Information to follow, particularly once they get through um, the fault analysis, because you don't want to make the same mistake twice. And those of you who follow this at all know just how amazing SpaceX is how successful they've been. And I think it's because they adhere to very careful procedures uh, in the readiness review cycle for the spacecraft. So we now know that we will fly no earlier than January 21st. And what I tell people is usually when you're told that, that means it won't be January 21st, uh, but it will be sometime around then. And that's just the life of uh, a spacecraft uh, owner. You fly when everything's ready, a whole lot of things got to come together to have a successful launch. And uh, I think I've said this on this Facebook event before, but I'll repeat it again. I had the honor of working for uh, one of the original Mercury astronauts for more than a decade gentleman named Deke Slayton, who ultimately flew on Apollo Soyuz, but was head of the astronaut office and truly an American hero and a nice man. But what Deke said constantly uh, was that NASA doesn't give out awards for on-time failures. So we're not looking to have an on-time failure for this flight. We're looking to have, an, have a success 
and it will fly no earlier than when everyone believes that that analysis is done, that the stacking has occurred, the rollout to the pad has occurred, the hot fire test of the motors have occurred, and then we'll know we're ready to go. Um, and that's, that's what I can tell you is to hang tight. We will let you know, and we do, the microsecond that we know any new information. There is no new information to know today. Uh, and so we can't say anything other than that. So um, two things. One is we will conduct a live uh, launch day mission webcast. And we'll do that and we'll, uh, if you will, wrap in the SpaceX webcast into what we're doing. But we'll have um, the same set of guests, uh, but we'll all be live as opposed to during the memorial service. Really, only Mark and I will be live. Everything else will be uh, uh, on video. But we'll all be live, and we'll start our launch coverage about 45 minutes before T0. Or, or no, 45 minutes before SpaceX starts. Right. And SpaceX usually starts about 15 minutes. So you have about an hour of coverage before the launch. Uh, the launch itself, uh, probably about eight minutes after liftoff, you'll see the second stage burnout. And when and that's after the first stage comes landing back on the on the drone ship. But about at second stage burnout we will have been placed into orbit. Uh, second stage successful burn means the spacecraft will be in orbit. And at that point, we will have fulfilled our commitment to you guys, which is we'll get your loved one uh, to orbit. The orbital lifetime, if it's a nominal mission, is four to seven years, and you'll be able to track it real time. Uh, for those of you who are planning to go to Florida, now you'll notice that we aren't doing anything in Florida because of the constraints of not wanting to hold a super spreader event. But there still are folks who said, I understand the risks that I'm taking and I gotta be there to see the launch. For you all, we've directed you to our friends, Janet and Jack Kennedy who run you name it vacations.com who live there have a condo that overlooks the uh, Jeff Bezos launch pad that's being built at Cape Canaveral and they can help you with reservations where to eat other things to do build maximal flexibility into your plans meaning I'll get, you'll get <laughs> a few days notice, but even when you get a few days notice, keep your ear to the ground because as we have always said, there's any number of reasons why launches can be delayed right up to the T zero point, weather, boats in the area, technical issues, range issues, all kinds of stuff. So what, what I do, and I go, this will be the, really only the second of our missions that I've not gone to, but I'm an old guy and, and only have half of my vaccinations and I'm just not willing to take the risk to, to go, nor am I at all willing to create an event where others would be put at risk. So I won't be there. But when I'm ready to go, I just got to be ready to pick up and go. So you're not you're very unlikely to be able to buy those $38 tickets um, that lock you in. Uh, you should make reservations with Jack and Jeanette that are flexible and you can go. As I've said at every Facebook live event since we made the decision and, and informed you all in September that we weren't going to do anything, the beaches are a great place to see them. Uh, the launches, Jetty Park is a great place to see the launch. Please be socially distant when you do that. 
Uh, this isn't like our last launch, which was only the second flight of the Falcon Heavy, and it was just jammed with people wherever you went. This will be because it's a relatively um, – it's a very important launch for us, but it's not one that's going to attract giant crowds who are willing to – take their life's risk and going, you'll probably have plenty of opportunity to see the launch. And once you get close, and again, the beaches of Cape Canaveral, the Jetty Park viewing area at Cape Canaveral, even north at Playa Linda Beach, that's about as good as you can see even if you're right there because even the folks that are right there are a minimum of three to five miles away. And after the first four seconds, it's all the same. So you can get a good view. Uh, you can go there. Uh, we will do our darndest, and I think Jack and Jeanette are standing by to do our darn darndest to help you enjoy it. I recommend you take a little iPad with you or a phone and watch our coverage because we're going to have cooler coverage than anybody else. That is correct. Uh, uh, during the launch, but there it's possible to go. You just have to, and I'll say this one more, be very flexible. And what here's how we handle launch news. The microsecond we get the news, we put it on our website. So, you, you know, some people will check two or three times a day for that. Like, that's what I do. <laughs> but... We will then send out an email to the primary contacts, and you know if you're a primary contact, of all of the participants. So they'll get an email, I would say, the very day that we hear it that says, here's the launch date, it's been established, stay tuned. Um, we may or may not have time to do another Facebook Live event. It's just simply how much lead time we get. If there's sufficient lead time, we'll do another Facebook Live event. And we will call you if um, um, we've tried and we've seen that you're a primary contact and for some reason you've ignored us and <laughs> not opened our, our emails, we'll call you and say, hey, did you get that? So with all that, um, but we'll only do this for confirmed launch dates. And that's because there are a lot of people that think they know when the launch is going to be and they'll publish it. But uh, uh, we'll, we're your broker, we're your arbiter. Uh, and um, we'll let you know when we have good information. And good news is some of you will be driving and have some flexibility. If you're, you know, again, I, I know how important, trust me, I know how important this launch is to you. Florida is kind of a cool place to hang out. You, there's lots of attractions. I once went to a shuttle launch that was canceled four times before I got to see it. And I got all the way down to Key West for a day. I got to Orlando for a day. Uh, I did some fishing offshore. So there's lots of stuff to do while you're waiting, and you just got to have that attitude of it will fly when it's ready to fly, and I know enough to be there. But again, it'll be great on video. Uh, and so the vast majority of you all will be seeing it. Uh, and we have, tele we have exclusive telescopic up-close cameras. We have stuff that you will not see on the SpaceX uh, webcast. Um, and let's see, no later than date. No, we don't have any no later than dates. <laughs> we have only no earlier than dates. Um, and um, someone thinks I'm being insensitive. I'm not being insensitive, and I resent the yeah, fact I, that you think I'm being insensitive. Yeah, I understand I, I, that it's a grief journey. Yeah, um, Charles, let me I, just say. I have friends on every flight that uh, we've had so far. I know that you're going through grief. I go through that same grief. I also know that, know that we'll bring you joy, exuberance, and fulfillment as well. And so 
Uh, I am sorry if you feel I'm insensitive. I am the polar opposite of insensitive. Yeah, I, uh, that's a rarity, um, Charles. I, I, I really am sorry that Mary needed to post that because it's 100% not true. This is not our first rodeo. Uh, we've done this many times. We have made many friends. We have had exciting events uh, over the last 16 flights that we've had. We've 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 taken great care and given you uh, numerous information as we retrieve it to make sure that everyone has kept up to date with the understanding that we do not control the launches. We have nothing to do with the flights taking off at a specific day or time. That is not us. We are passengers. We're leasing out space. Uh, Charles gives out the information that is necessary for the families to have and, and, and all of them. We, we don't with, withhold anything. Everything is within your graphs. You can ask a million questions of why something has happened and we will answer it immediately. But Ah, oh, Mary, the, the little insensitivity thing was hitting a little below the belt because we don't do that. And right. uh, the reason why people pick us up for this service. So I'm so sorry you feel that way, but I'm sorry I have to disagree with you. Yeah. What we commit to do, as I say, is hard. We place a symbolic portion of your loved one into space. Nobody else can do that. The other stuff that we've um, we provide memorial services, opportunities to attend. Um, those are wonderful extras. Um, but let's stay focused on what your loved one wanted or what you wanted for your loved one, which is a journey to Earth orbit. Agreed. So we have another question about will there be a photo of the rocket available at, or as it's taking off to frame with the horizon patch. Yes. Our good friend, uh, John Krause, who, if you go to John Krause, uh, photos or J Krause photo, or just Google John Krause, you'll see he is a truly excellent young photographer and we will make, uh, unbelievable. we will, those photos will be available obviously after the launch. But um, yes, and we'll have you all get a what we call family video, uh, which will be produced after the launch that will bring you highlights of the memorial service, highlights of the launch. And let's see. So here's another question. Will the capsule Celeste circle the Earth for four to seven years? And can we track the capsule all during this time? So the answer to that is yes, assuming we achieve a nominal orbit. Uh, what do I mean by a nominal orbit? What I mean by that is it's going where it's supposed to go. And sometimes you can still get to orbit if you have a less than full engine burn, for example. But assuming that the, uh, the um, second stage fires the full eight minutes, you'll be there four to seven years. And why, is, why the variance? Well, things like solar wind and sun activity, uh, there are a number of things that grow the atmosphere. And if the atmosphere grows, it creates more drag on the spacecraft and the spacecraft comes back sooner. That's the reason for the variance. But you will be able to track it on our website 24 seven. Charles, I have a question for you. Okay. Uh, is this a single rocket engine or will we have a triple like we did last June uh, in 2019? Yeah, it's a good question. Well, so Falcon 9 has nine first stage engines. Falcon Heavy, Heavy had 27 first stage engines. Wow. So nine wow. engines fires the first stage. Then you have separation. The um, uh, booster comes back and lands on either the drone ship or, or land. I think we're drone ship on this one. The second stage has a single engine and it fires, I believe it's eight minutes. Okay, so in terms of the booster return, we're looking for a one rocket booster return. Correct, yes. Okay, our last mission, we had three returns. Two, three, yeah, oh, all three. Yeah, all, yeah, yeah. yeah we, we well, had three returns. That was a Falcon Heavy and there have been only yeah. 
two or three Falcon Heavies launched in the history of Falcon Heavy. Yeah, one of our most spectacular launches. It was unbelievable and our but every, in person. Every launch is an amazing experience. I go yeah. to the little teeny ones out in New Mexico and yeah. they're they're amazing too because they get to Mach 6 in like a second and a half. And it's amazing how the sound is delayed. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know. Yeah. Uh, amazing experience. So, we we obviously have a lot of people that are actually traveling to the Cape. Uh, mm -hmm. They're still asking questions, some that have already been answered, people that are coming from Ohio, people who live here in Florida who are actually going to uh, uh, watch their loved ones uh, uh, orbit. Um, can you? Oh, OK. Actually, our team at Celeste's headquarters has actually answered the question, which was, can you repeat um, if you yep. need reservations of any kind who you need to go through? And if you guys would look at our screen, you can jot that down really quick um, if you don't get it. Uh, please don't fret. We answer every question. Go to our Facebook page. Go to our uh, website. Uh, the whole nine yards. We will take extreme care uh, of you to make sure that if you're going in person, uh, you're there to see it. Just make sure that you have your uh, cell phone and maybe your iPad or, or whatever so you can uh, watch a replay of the memorial. I'm assuming, Charles, has that been announced yet as to any replays of the memorial service? Hey. Well, live on demand. And then what I said earlier was we will run it right before the uh, launch day. So the night before, okay. which has been our traditional uh, uh, time to have the memorial service. Right. And, um, uh, yeah. Uh, you still there, Charles? Is yeah. Oh, OK. OK. Um, we're, we're getting so many great comments. Thank you so much, everyone. P people that have attended our past launches and know what that feeling, that effect is. Uh, uh, Miss Mulligan says she attended the Jimmy Dewan from Star Trek Scotty, Star Trek Scotty, years ago in the Southwest. That was our New Mexico launch. Uh, and it's nice to have a lot of returning folks. We actually had during one of our la last uh, launches, I think our June 2019 launches, People who actually attended the launch and had no one on board. They just enjoyed the previous launch that they had someone on board and said, I'm going to the next one regardless. And that was mainly in support um, and in solution, salute to those that are uh, additional passengers with Celestis. So we're, we're really, really happy about that. Thank you so much, guys. Again, you all should feel special because this is um, you're joining a very few folks that have ever had this opportunity to celebrate their life um, in that way. And um, we understand grief. What I tell folks is you'll never go to a memorial service where there's as much cheering and high-fiving as there is at our launches. And you'll see that and you'll feel that and all will be well because uh, we will get your loved one to space. Um, and, uh, that's just what we do, and we're pretty good at it. So um, I'm very excited. I'm a, you know, the part of me wants to just say rent an RV and drive on over. <laughs> the other part of me says wait till you get that second booster shot in February. Yeah, yeah. And 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 uh, interesting thing is, I I live here in Orlando, so I see every launch my from my front door, but I won't even see this one because uh, Charles and I will be on air with you guys yeah. um so i can't even peek out my window and and watch our flight go up but there is enough video uh between our what cosmic cosmic perspective is putting out for us and what spacex broadcast is putting out for us uh it's okay i i, I will I, i've seen what the outside of, of a rocket launching from the cape looks like from my front door i'm more concerned with our passengers our participants our loved ones your loved ones that are taking this flight um that they've always wanted and uh, please watch the memorial services and remember that it is alphabetical for the tributes so kind of gauge where you are if they're on the g's and you know that your last name is in the m's then you have time uh, but there is a lot of special people charles do you know of any international folks that are flying with us on this flight certainly we have folks from germany UK, Sweden, Russia, Japan, 
and probably, oh, and uh, at least one South American country. Uh, all of our missions have international participants. Yes, uh, that's really cool. And yes, we, we, you know, it's, it's especially meaningful. Let's, let's do a little summary here because people okay, please. flow in and flow out. So mm -hmm. memorial service Thursday, the 14th, five Australia. Thank you, Anthony. We do have people from Australia on the, uh, <laughs> how could I forget that? Rusted. <laughs> uh, we, we've had a number of, of Aussies and a couple of, uh, folks from New Zealand on our flights in the past. Um, so memorial service, 5 p.m. Central Time, and Google can help you figure out what time zone it'll be if you're not in Central. Don't rely on my math. Um, probably about a two and a half hour celebration of life with compelling videos. Hang on, I'm getting some advice here. The event page allows them to choose the local zone. Ah, zone. I'm told by our web developer that our event page, which is live now, allows you to choose your local zone and find out what time it is. So uh, you don't even have to trust Google. So um, Thursday for a, a great memorial service with um, music, with wonderful space experts, but most importantly, and most significantly, your contributions to the event. Then stay closely attuned to us. Make sure launch team at celestis.com doesn't go into your spam filter. Uh, and we will let you know first by posting on the website, then by sending out the emails, then by snooping on you whether you open the email or not. Um, the amazing technologies that's available. And if you didn't, we'll call you um, and let you know when we have a launch date. It's no earlier than January 21st. Uh, there's a lot of work that has to be done between now and then. So don't be surprised if it moves a little bit. On launch day, we will come on an hour before T0. And of course, on the event page, when we know when T0 is, We'll put that on as well, so you'll know what time to tune in. Our team will come on an hour beforehand. We will integrate the SpaceX count into what we're providing for you. And in fact, during the last eight minutes before launch, we'll shut up and you'll just be watching the SpaceX count. But prior to that, we have, again, our group of experts and some pretty compelling content. Uh, for 45 minutes before the uh, SpaceX uh, uh, count comes on, on launch day. You'll be able to view, assuming everything is working well, uh, we'll have a, uh, a telescope uh, camera that will give you uh, shots that you can't find anyplace else, thanks to cosmic perspective. So you'll be able to watch the launch uh, uh, as if you were there all the way till it can't be seen anymore by telescope. We will stay on live during the second stage burn and even to coast if SpaceX decides to cover deployment of the satellites. And that's often an ITAR issue. And for those of you that are space folks, um, ITAR is, is the State Department regulation on uh, secret technology. So sometimes the satellites are classified as not, we don't want to show them or businesses don't want to show them. If that's the case, we won't be able to show that either. But we'll stay on for the full time uh, of the launch and you will be able to track the launch. We usually get the tracking up. I don't want to commit to same day but we'll, we'll certainly do it within 24 hours of the launch so that you'll be able to track your spacecraft on our website very quickly. Uh, question about what time will the launch be in Australia? It's a great question, but since we don't even know what time it will be in Florida, <laughs> right. we can't answer it yet. But when we find out, we will put it on our event page. Again, your resource, your guide going forward needs to be www.celestis.com. 
You get to the home page, you just scroll a little teeny bow down, it says the horizon flight. The third button to click is event page. That's where everything goes, everything that's new, everything that's going on for this launch will be put on that page near real time. Um, what have I missed, Mark? Uh, nothing so far. I think you've pretty much covered everything. Um, Re-emphasizing the fact that, you know, when we know, you will know. So we can't, you know, really uh, worry about now, now, now. And I want it, you know, a lot of people are detail oriented and, and, and I understand that scheduled oriented. I understand that, but not when it comes to space. There, there is no schedule uh, when it comes to space, even with the rocket on the pad. It's up to SpaceX, NASA, everyone to tell us, OK, we're starting our countdown now. And then you'll know. I got a comment. I see Tanya's comment that her Tanya? stepdad was a trustee on the astronaut oh, yeah. fellowship program, and, which was founded by the original Mercury 7 astronauts. I went to the actual luncheon that kicked that off. Uh, it happened to be in Washington. and Deke was there. Deke was the president of my company at that point. So I got to go there and I met all of them except, of course, Gus Grissom, but I met B Betty Grissom. At, at that launch. And it is a special uh, thing for him to fly. Knowing, you know, we flew Gordon Cooper, who was also an original Mercury astronaut. So um, I'm, I'm excited that we'll be able to fly your stepdad. Yeah. And if, if you guys, I, I, we mentioned that we are showing our tributes alphabetically, uh, but I, I had the opportunity to view. Uh, the video that both Tom Hanks and um, um, Ron Howard, thank you, Ron Howard made uh, in tribute to their friend who is on this flight, and you have got to watch this. So um, their friend was named Al Reiner. Thank you. So that would I, be in the R's. Yeah, I knew Al, and Al was the screenplay writer for Apollo 13, and we were delighted uh, when Al's widow contacted us along with Jerry, the late musician, Jerry Jeff Walker's, uh, wife and said, we need to get Al on this flight. And Al was a special, um, uh, very special person as is everyone. Yes. Flight. Thank you. Everyone yeah. has a story. We tell some of them just because we're aware of them, yes. but you all got the chance to tell, the story of your special uh, participant. And they're all amazing. There are some amazingly accomplished adult autistics on this flight. Mm. There are a couple, and it seems like we get this on every flight, of very special young people who took their own life, who, who parents decided that this is the right way to honor them. Uh, why, women and men, who all live their own lives uh, have they'll, they'll come together. This will be this is you're all now part of the Celestis family, and uh, it's amazing to have you on board. We're we're thrilled to be able to provide the service, and uh, we work hard at it. Trust me um, to to make sure that everything that can be done is being done. And we aren't without flaws, so uh, cut us some slack if you if you spy our flaws. <laughs> uh, where can I send a picture of my loved one to be incorporated in the memorial service? Is it too late? Nope, it's not too late. Send, send it to CS1 at. Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm getting <laughs> advisor again. Just give me the address to send it, please. Can't hear it. Send it to the website. <laughs> okay, you can go to our website to the event page. Is that correct? No. no. Just to the contact us button on our website. And uh, Richard from our staff will uh, be in immediate touch with you and we'll, we'll make sure even if I have to hold it up 
during the memorial service that will get your loved one's photo into the service. <laughs> uh, but you might also want to send some biographical information because we have a participants page and that's where we put all that. And that stays forever. We have folks that flew with us on our first mission in 1997, including Gene Roddenberry and Timothy Leary and several others whose photos and biographies are on our site to this day. So our commitment is to maintain that going forward. So you'll find us maximally flexible. If we can do it, we'll do it. If we can't do it, it's only because the world or the rules or the technology doesn't permit us to do that. Right. Uh, I want to mention real quick, uh, thank you for the comment, uh, Bridget. She says uh, this is what she's doing uh, when her time on Earth is over. Please don't rush. Take <laughs> your time. We, we have, did I mention our lunar mission? Okay, <laughs> that, that may be a little too soon. Uh, for you as well, Brigitte, but um, we do have a lunar mission that's coming up and it, it'll be uh, the second time that we've uh, launched a lunar mission. And uh, maybe Charles can tell you real quick a little bit more about that before we sign off. Got one more question here, which is, do I understand that our video will be on our loved one's pay web page also? This, yes, there'll be a link from the web page to our YouTube channel where we'll have all of the videos permanently there so if someone goes to your loved loved ones to our goes to horizon flight participants clicks on your loved one you'll see a link to the video which will take you to the youtube channel and see the video to see the video, to see the video. um yeah we're working on luna 03 i haven't named it yet luna 02 is tranquility flight and it's going on an astrobotic uh, lander on a Vulcan um, centaur. And um, uh, we're very excited about that. We have, I think, about 70 folks whose final resting place will be the moon, which I think is very cool because every night that you look up, we'll be landing on the side of the moon where you'll – you can see that's that's where dad is. And um, it's right now we were asked by NASA in 1999 to help them honor Dr. Eugene Shoemaker, the discoverer of Shoemaker-Levy Comet. Uh, and we made him the first person buried on the moon. He's on the south pole of the moon. But the next 70 will be on our tranquility flight. Uh, Showing pictures of people while we're reading the bios is another question, and the answer is yes. If we have your your picture, John has already recorded his uh, reading of the bio info, and it'll be shown uh, alongside the photos. So we're you know we know that connecting to your loved one uh, and having them sort of introduced to the world is important, and we're doing we're doing that as well. All right, I think I'm talked out. I think uh, that's it, yeah. But let me just also say, we're when we get near the mission, we're pretty much a 24 seven operation. So if you have a thought or a question or you didn't get something, you can send us an email. And thank you, Christina, our social media guru who published the email address up above uh, on how to click and contact us. We answer the phone uh, during normal business hours, uh, have dedicated client services folks, and um, we're here uh, to get your loved one to space, to do what we've committed to do, and uh, to give you a very special way to celebrate a loved one. So I think with that, we'll log off for this Facebook Live. And thank everyone again who take time out of their day to join us. Hope we've answered all your questions. Hope we've done it with reverence because that's who we are. And um, we're looking forward to, uh, to uh, having a successful launch and a great memorial service.
Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This has been Charles Chaper, our CEO with Celestis. I am Mark Lee. I am your Celestis ambassador. You'll see us again this week, uh, twice in one week. Yeah, you can't get enough of us uh, Thursday night during our memorial service. So please check in for that. Thank you once again for joining us. And remember, there's never any end to the questions you may have. We will always answer them. Take care and good night. This is the launch conductor in um, Mission Control. We, we pause at this moment in our countdown to remember and honor the lives of each of the participants on the Celestis Memorial Space Flight. Their presence on this flight signifies a commitment to the opening of the space frontier shared by all of us. We wish the friends and families present today and all those who are with us in spirit all over the world, Godspeed, good luck, and our thanks for allowing us to share this very personal time with you today. LCL. Five vehicles armed, three, two, one, fire.